back from bpo24hours.com and it's a Saturday afternoon and I just wanted to talk to you about why you would want a virtual assistant and where you could actually use them. Because um, a lot of people don't actually believe or need, think they need a, a virtual assistant. But as many things that you're doing every day um, which you could outsource to give yourself more time or give yourself more productive time. A uh, prime example of that is one of my relatives um, every Saturday and Sunday has to produce safety reports for vehicles and equipment. Um, there, it's basically just filling in some sheets, printing them off, but literally it takes uh, 14 hours on Saturday and 14 hours on Sunday because they have to be prepared for Monday uh, for all the transportation documents for all the lovely health and safety that the UK has these days. Um, that could be easily outsourced to a couple of agents for Saturday and a couple of agents for Sunday that would actually complete it uh, for all Monday um, at very little cost compared to the time that he's actually losing himself. Um, the, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, it's, it's a job that you have to do as part of his role, but it's not a paid role. Um, it's just something that's been added to his job over time. And although it's very unlikely the company itself would pay for it, it's the productivity um, of getting his weekends back would actually benefit the company as well as himself uh, in, in health. Um, you know, you need time off at the weekends. If you don't, then you're going to burn out at some point. But that was just one example. Because um, the easiest way to find out if you, ac you actually have uh, an opportunity for using a VA is to sit down, uh, list down what you do every day, and then do it over the week. So like Monday, uh, check the emails, check the uh, mailbox, send out quotations, whatever you're doing. Uh, just list them all down. Break them down into roughly how long they take as well. Then the next thing is take that information and split it into another two categories for stuff that you need to do and stuff that someone else could do. Now, once you do that, you get an idea of how many hours you can allocate to somebody else. Now. You might think, yeah, but that's just going to give me an extra cost. Well, for most people, there's a hidden cost, which is your productivity time. Um, for example, how many meetings can you get to because you're busy doing the invoices on Friday? Um, how many um, networking uh, meetings do you never go to that you could do? Could you get involved with the, the local um, small business groups which could actually help you network with them with your skills and their skills to develop a market between you. Um, there's lots and lots of things um, productive wise that you would need to do yourself but you're often tied up doing stuff that you don't really need to be there doing. Um, the invoicing obviously has to be done but it doesn't need to be done by you. The same as chasing orders, chasing payments, um, making sure people have sent their checks out. You know, that gentle reminder on a Tuesday, did you send your check out on Monday? Those sort of little calls need to be done, but they don't necessarily need to be done by yourself. This would actually give you more time to generate new business or concentrate on developing your existing business rather than dealing with a lot of the stuff that ties you down. Um, I, I've been in the same situation myself um, when I had my own locksmith company and security company in the UK where you're constantly doing things like quotations. Now the quotations are part of the business that needs to be done. At the same time, if, if I did a sketch form with the number of um, pieces of equipment for an installation, Someone else could put the quotation together for me. So I could write it on, on a small piece of paper, you know, number of passive infrareds, PIRs, etc., etc., and they could actually put the price together. And even if they didn't send it off, 
but emailed it for me to confirm before it was emailed, that alone would take me at least 15 to 20 minutes for every single quotation. Now, those little things soon add up. And this is where a VA can actually help you take your business from being um, a one-man band to having multiple employees, but not just as a VA, obviously, but actually taking your company to the next step. Having VAs here in the Philippines is extremely cost-effective because all the tax liabilities, all the uh, employment law pains, and dealing with health and safety regulations, and you know, when I say health and safety, I'm not talking about we sit people on the end, end of a plank. I'm talking about things like having to have a meal area, having to have a toilet area, having to have um, adequate smoking facilities. All these sort of things aren't your problem. Because I, I know myself doing business in the UK, they are a big problem. Um, having to do all the health and safety um, method statements for all these tasks when a lot of them are just replicated generic tasks but they still have to go through the process of doing it in case of site slightly something different. Even that could actually be outsourced where the generic system is put together you say what you need, I need one for step ladders, I need one for um, accessing uh, lifting equipment it can all be done outsourced the VAs can do that already. Um, this is what partly why working with somebody like myself helps because I come from a business environment in the UK and it makes it much easier to teach people in the Philippines what you're actually wanting. Um, because I know a lot of people are put off by using VAs, by using things like uh, Odesk and uh, Freelancer, for example. Because half the time people apply from India, Pakistan, or wherever, and they don't even have a clue what you're wanting. I've had it myself where I needed um, a specific piece of software design, I was very specific in the advertisement what I wanted, and it involved coding um, not only uh, programming but some audio. And the guy thought I was talking about drawing a picture. Yes, it is laughable. Um, but the problem is, this is what is putting people off using VAs because you can spend ages looking for the right person instead of get, getting them to take some of your workload so that life's easier instead of more complicated. That's where we come in because if you have specific tasks here in the Philippines, I will look at it first because I know already what my staff are capable of. I know already where they would need extra training. I also know that if it's um, workable or I have a better solution, I'll put it on the table. Because part of what I do uh, when I work internationally is I don't just do the call center work, is I do um, procurements of contracts. Um, some very large contracts, multi-million pound contracts, where my prime assessment is the viability of the contract. Part of that viability is looking at where the contract is losing money. Because um, all of these contracts come up in the first place because the main client is not happy with the existing company. Um, normally because they're cutting costs because the contract isn't viable, but at the same time there's huge holes in the contract which would actually make it extremely viable. Um, a prime example of this is if you take um, Maintenance regimes, um, a very big uh, chain of stores in the UK, um, they're, they're in every town, they're still existing even after the, the, the current recession situation. Um, they have gas heaters, they used to be, uh, the buildings they took over were predominantly what was Texas before it became Texas home base. Um, so they were the Texas stores. So if you know where your old Texas store is, you know which company I'm talking about. But they have gas maintenance on all their boilers. Now the contract actually states that they're all serviced. But in many of the stores, at least 60% of them are obsolete or condemned. 
Now, the thing with this is, each service visit would cost between 80 and 100 pounds for a gas boiler. Doesn't sound a lot, does it? Until I say you have 14 boilers in there, and only five of them work. But you're still paying 1,400 pounds for the servicing. So I would look at that and say, well, the first bit of viability here is the fact is most of those units are already condemned. Why don't we just shut them up completely, disconnect them, and it will reduce your maintenance costs considerably. Um, and it, these are the sort of things I look for. I, I look for um, where contracts are losing money, not always to the benefit of the uh, main client or the company that's coming into the facilities management, but somewhere in the middle, it actually adds a bit of uh, leeway for both people to turn the contract into something that works. Because um, obviously a facilities management company won't be too keen on shutting down half of their maintenance um, revenue simply by switching and disconnecting half of the faulty boilers. At the same time, the client was very happy for that because he saved a small fortune. But there are obviously uh, units that would never be repaired anyway. There's no parts. So you, you actually create a contract that might have serious problems otherwise because financially it's not viable because of mistakes in the contract like every single boiler has to be maintained when if you disconnect them it's no longer a boiler it's, it's just a lump of metal it's no use to anybody so from my own background I understand um, the needs to not downsize downstream all those fancy words but actually make business work smarter um, I know there's a lot of people who say, oh, losing jobs, taking jobs abroad, blah, blah, blah. But I tell you now, if you haven't got a PA or a VA already, then whose job did they take? Because the fact is, you haven't got an assistant. And if you do have an assistant, it's very likely that they work part-time because you can't afford a full-time assistant. Now, it doesn't mean get rid of your assistant there, because your assistant may be primarily working on the phone or dealing with your accountant. But you could actually take a VA on part-time or full-time to actually help your other assistant work more efficiently as well. Because it's not all just about yourself. Um, there's other stuff that can be done um, that you're probably not doing already. Somebody deals with all your emails somebody that deals with your website, if somebody that does all your social networking. There's a whole market there that many businesses haven't even looked at. Um, because the point is with a VA is they're doing an expansion of your business. But at the same time, it's all about working smarter. It's not about working um, in a way that's actually going to be restrictive or more, cost, uh, more costly to yourself. It's actually all about improving your business. So for me, a VA is not only about having somebody sat there like a secretary, it's also understanding what you need one for. That's, that's why I said sit and write down your tasks. But then there is also the, the daily, weekly, monthly, annually, quarterly um, types of work that you do. And then you, you, obviously your one-off things that are a pain that, that you're doing. A uh, prime example of that is company photographs. Company photographs, go, if, you're, if you're using them for SEO and also to keep your company website up to date, um, they do need descriptions. They need somebody to sit there for ages going through all the photos, sorting them all out into the right order, giving them all descriptions of what they are and when they were and who was in them. Um, something that's very timely, but long term is something worth doing. Especially if you're showing a timeline of your business from start to current, uh, where you can actually show the growth and say, well, back in 1987, we started out with uh, one truck, um, and now we have four, um, four depots and 100 trucks. Showing progress of a company is something that people do find interesting and can work productively for your business to show where it came from and where it's going. Um, there's all sorts of things. And even in a, even as a private person, things like your photographs need sorting out. 
if timely, is boring. But at the same time, if you wanted them online, somebody could sit and sort them out for you. If you wanted them all put into some sort of um, DVD, somebody could do that for you. The fact is, there's so many tasks out there. It's more about people realizing they can outsource it than it is about, well, I don't need a missus. Because even a small part-time business is missing business without even realizing it. Um, I know myself that I hate answering the phone after 5 o'clock. Um, I do it with e existing clients and business, the, um, business from outside the country that I deal with. But I don't really want to be doing it every day. I do get lots of the harassing, annoying um, companies from India and Pakistan harassing me lately, which really does bug me, which is the selling me services we already do, but at the same time, they have no respect for the time zone difference. Um, no, I, if you're in the UK, by the way, if you need me to call you at 5 p.m. in the afternoon, I will call you at 5 p.m. I don't expect you to be up in the middle of the night to call me, um, because quite simply, that's, that's, you know, we're the guys providing the service. But when you call, when these guys call me, uh, asking for business from me, it's the other way around. I'm the client, so that's why I complain about people calling me at two in the morning, expecting me to be online and available so that they can give me their spiel on how they're gonna improve my business with SEO. Um, enough arguing about that. It's a little bit irritating. I had 10 people do it to me today, which is why I'm a bit uh, tired today. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the fact is, there's lots of things that the EA can do. Um, that would be a prime example where people can actually call um, and handle your calls for you. The, you can transfer your number onto a Skype number, for example, um, so that when you're logged in, it, it goes to you, but you can also use the same account with a VA, so you can track what the conversations were in Skype, but also any conversations would actually go through on Skype as well uh, via live telephones because you just get a, a Skype telephone number for the UK, US, Australia, wherever, you, wherever your business is and you can use that as a transfer number where you forward your existing number to that number so that they actually get to speak to a live person instead of an answering machine. Um, there's lots of things that the VA can and would do for you. And one thing I will say about living in the Philippines and knowing Filipino people, they're very keen to please the person they're working for. Jobs are very important here. Um, the, the fact is, people are very proud that they're working for somebody that's a foreigner. They like to be working for the foreigner. They like being part of an international company. They like working for BPO24Hour.com, for example, because it's um, a call center job. Now, I say call center because that's where our business started. Well, it didn't it started in Excel data uh, spreadsheets. But it, the growth came from the call center side. But in the UK, a lot of people do not like the call center jobs. But here, it's a, it's a good job because it pays a good salary. And that's part of the, the whole thing with the virtual assistants is in the UK, US, Australia, Cost-effective wise, a VA in the Philippines is very cheap, but also their language skills and grammar skills is also very good because the, everybody here speaks English. Um, I believe it's somewhere around 97, 98 percent of the population speak English. It's taught in school. Um, the fact is, they they are taught it as a second language, but also most people here speak at least two languages, if not three. Um, because like here, where I live in Cebu, um, the local dialect Cebuano or Visaya, it's a, you know, the, it, the people here also do Tagalog, which is the language dialect, which is mainly from Manila. Um, and then they also have English. But also you'll find a lot of people here have worked for Japanese, Chinese, German, 
um, different companies and may also speak another language um, depending on which company they work for because a lot of the time um, their employers do not speak English or their local dialect so they they get through it by actually learning the languages they need. That's the sort of dedication you get. But it also means a bit of commitment from your side uh, to help develop your the business you want from the VA because you you can get a good VA but to get the perfect VA you're gonna have to develop it with them. You're gonna have to be the uh, take the lead and say this is how I want this process. This is how I want this done because. Working systematically and methodical, you'll get less mistakes, but also the product productivity improves. It's benef beneficial for everybody. And this is one of the things with the, the virtual assistants. They are good, but like like, um, like most tools in the toolbox, they're only as good as the person using them. So um, they will do exactly as they're told. Um, if you want them to use a bit of initiative, you have to make them aware to use a bit of initiative. The, the, the people are used to doing as they're structured to do. So um, it's not a bad thing if you understand how it works and how to process people, how to get people to do specific jobs. And the, one of the things I recommend is actually doing when you have a breakdown, you can then set. I want you to do uh, my email checks in the morning. I want you to call the suppliers um, by one o'clock. I want you to make sure that any incoming calls, you take their email and tell them I'll email them back by the end of the day. Those sort of things are very simple tasks that you can note down. But if a VA has that information, they work better and work smarter for you. Um, this is why I try, you know, I'm trying to bring it as, across is it's not going to be an instant success uh, with everything because they need to understand how your business works, how you work, what you want from this, um, where they can help make your life easier, and in return, they'll give you the commitment, they'll put the hours in, they'll put the effort in, and they're looking for long-time permanent jobs. And the, the main thing is you're not just hiring somebody that uh, I just walked off the street. All the people that are doing our VAs have skills that they brought from um, college and universities. We have people that have uh, very technical knowledge. Um, they, you know, they, they, they could be engineers. Um, they could be web designers, uh, IT, IT um, guys with master's degrees. The fact is, there's a lot of people here with a lot of skill set. Um, that's why there's a bit of flexibility we using somebody like dpl24hour.com because you may have your regular uh, VA, but then you want a website designed and built from scratch. You could then just drop us an email or get your VA to contact me, and I'll give you a few people that can do it, and you take the best one, the one, the one you feel more com most confident with and happy with. Um, the point is, the VA business is here to stay. Um, I, to be honest, I actually think over time people are going to actually start to see why companies should be doing it, doing it instead of trying to avoid doing it. Um, I know it's a growing business; it, it, it's growing all the time. But at the same time, there's still a bit of a stigma with outsourcing. Um, but we're overcoming it all the time. But also, it's part of doing business these days. It's necessary. Um, there, there's parts of your business that isn't viable to do locally. Um, I know for a fact, a lot of the legislation stuff, I would actually be more happier getting somebody to do it in the Philippines and me proofreading it in the UK um, if I was still operating a business out of the UK. Because the advantage with that is, it only takes me a couple of minutes to browse things, but it takes me all day to actually sit there and write the bloody things. Um, well, 
Uh, let me know some feedback. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your your thoughts are on having a VA. What would you see a VA doing in your business? Um, just give me some ideas, like, um, and we can sit and discuss that. Okay, um, this is Matt from ppl24hour.com. Thank you for your time.